play. Famous person on the line. Famous person on the line. Here we go. Famous Here we go. person on the line. Now, usually this show is a cavalcade of uh, of nobodies come on the show. It's rare that it's like a four leaf clover when we get a top notch A list legend on the show, and we have such a guest tonight. This guy. Imagine if you were in the cramps. You'd you'd dine out on that till the end of time. But imagine if you were in Gun Club. You'd dine out on that till the end of time. What if you were in Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds? This guy was in all of them. And he's got so many other things. He's got Kid Congo, the Pink Monkey Birds, one of my favorite bands. And now he has a new book called Some Kind, Some New Kind of Kick. Welcome to the show, Kid Congo Powers. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me here. Oh, it's such a thrill. And, the- and I thought I was, but I was thinking about Mississippi and maybe that could be Bobby Gentry. Bob- she had the song Mississippi Delta. They go, M I double S I double S I double P I. That's how I learned how to spell it from the Bobby Gentry song. Pat. Kid Congo has spoken. It's Bobby Gentry from Mississippi. <laughs> Done. Thank you, sir. Yes. Okay. Let me just. My pleasure. Of course. Look, you're already paying dividends by having you on the show. Within 90 seconds, <laughs> you're already, you're fixing the program. <laughs> <laughs> how, how is this happening? Um, I read the book, Some New Kind of Kick. It is, it's a beautiful, funny heart-wrenching book congratulations on writing a book this this impressive truly amazing oh thank you well thank you yeah for that (laughs) now what when did you feel it was finally time to take your story and put it down on the page well uh, the thing is i started writing it actually the first scribbling and idea came in around 2006 and so it's been a long uh, a long gestation period to do it um i was in no hurry to, to do it I, I thought it would be really easy because a friend of mine uh, had done a uh, exhaustive interview and made a timeline for me and i said like oh look this is a timeline for a book i you know i'll but, just fill in the blank and that's jonathan easy. tobin but then jonathan tobin of new york night train and it actually it's still up on, on on the web on New York Night Train uh, uh, website, and it's uh, and uh, so yeah, so he uh, was putting out a record of mine before he was a world famous DJ. He was an entrepreneur of uh, indie music, and he he was going to start a label to put out all of his friends who couldn't get record deals, mm-hmm. and uh, one of one of which was me. Okay, and uh, and and so he. Uh, did and he thought well people know you were in, now i'm impersonating him people uh-huh. know you were in the in the cramps and they know you were in the gun club and they know you're in the bad seas but a lot of people don't know that you were in all three of those and so he was he took on the task of uh you know mapping it out for the uh the the, the 2006 uh audience of, of the internet and, okay uh, and that that was the beginning and uh and then I uh, put it down several times. I went to writing classes. I uh, got uncomfortable and wanted to throw it in the garbage. It, it scared me. I jumped out of my chair. Each time it scared me, I like jumped out of my chair and then uh, said, I have to make a record mm-hmm. and go on tour for a year. <laughs> yeah. you know? So it turned out and, to be uh, a, pr- a pretty good motivator so, for the music was to, oh, yeah, yeah. to run from the book. All the yeah, I had I had lyrics all ready to go and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, so 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 that was that was you know. So it, it took a while, and then um, you know, and then I started in earnest. I had a first draft, and then in earnest started editing and saying like, okay, I was working with the editor, and they they said like, oh, you're not telling everything here, and I was like, oh shit you know <laughs> caught and uh and then we started the long the long slog to uh uncovering all of the 
the uh, the deeper layers. Well, you certainly and, uncovered and, them. I'd be if you had deeper layers <laughs> beyond this book, I would be very concerned because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you could go much deeper. Um, yes, it it's really there's so many exciting parts of it and following your journey through all of these, mm. through all of these musical acts and through all of these eras is such a, such a, just a, it's breathtaking to just get all of these eras brought oh, to life, you. whether it's the tail end of the sixties or just what it was like to be a young person in Los Angeles when the seventies were blowing mm -hmm. up all the way straight through the book ends in I would what the, the late nineties. Is that was like 97? Yeah. 90? 97. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah well, so yeah. So yeah, that's a, that's a, a long time. <laughs> it's a, it's a very long <laughs> time. One of the most, I thought one of the most uh, impressively written parts was when you talked about the Ramones, your first exposure wow. to the Ramones, because you saw a picture first and that's what it was like before the internet. I'm not trying to sound like grandpa here, but it just is how it was. Uh, You'd often back in my day, back, I'm not doing that, but back in my <laughs> day, it kind of was like that where you'd read about a band you'd see a picture. I can't tell you how many months it took me before I finally got to hear what can sounded like after hearing, yeah. I knew, I knew about can, and then finally, it's like, well, mm -hmm. this is this is going to be the best thing I ever heard when I actually get to hear what can sound like. And Noi and those bands were just, you had to oh, hunt yeah. it down. But you knew when that, you saw a picture of the Ramones is where it started for you. Yeah, and you knew it was going to sound amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was like uh, someone, people that you never saw before, but they, it was all so familiar too. You know, and they had such attitude in the photo. It was like, you know, how can this not be amazing? You know, and, mm -hmm. and so when I got the record, it was beyond whatever I could have imagined. It was funnier and dumber and more advanced in a weird way, it was mm -hmm. like super art, art, artful in its simplicity and exciting, exciting. And you was one, was one of, to, I, I just started laughing and like falling over on my bed and dancing mm -hmm. around. It was yeah. a pretty incredible, uh, incredible thing, you know, to go from this picture to sound. And, uh, and of course they became my favorite, uh, band forever. Sure. And my forever favorite. Now here's, here's something I've always, I've asked Ramones fans over the years. You tell me what you thought of it. When, when Joey sings on the first record about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, he says Massacre, <laughs> right? Do you think he, because Bugs uh -huh. Bunny said Massacre when he would say Massacre. Uh, do, do, do you think he said that in real, in his real life? I'm just wondering if he got that um, from Bugs Bunny. Do you think? Oh, I think he could have definitely got it from Bugs Bunny. Yeah, like just mispronouncing <laughs> you know, they massacre. Were comp they, they were comp. Yes. <laughs> and I, I had to rhyme with, they took my baby from me. Yes. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you play the, the Bugs Texas Bunny card. Massacre. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. They and, were, they were a cartoon come to life and they didn't even have to try. And, you know, so they were, it was, it was amazing. And seeing them live was just the same, mm -hmm. you know, it was like the first time I saw them live, you know, uh, they would, they'd start playing and then they mess up the song and they start screaming at each other. <laughs> and then at one point, Joey like got lost his balance and like, was swaying from back and forth side to side and finally just tumbled over and back into the drums. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? One time I saw them play at an outdoor festival and, uh, Actually, I think they didn't even end up playing. And I was at the sound check, and they were, they were, and Dee Dee kept getting shocked every time he went to the mic. You know, it was, it was, he was not grounded. Mm -hmm. So he kept getting shocked. He's kind of like, oh man, I'm getting shocked. And then Joey, uh, and then Johnny yelled at him, like, it's good for you. 
<laughs> it's good. It's good for you to get electrocuted over and over. I just, yes. <laughs> so they were. That was a real thing. They were hilarious. That is so funny. <laughs> I, I'm friends with uh, Dave Windorf, who was in the band Shrapnel mm. back then. Who? Yeah, yeah. He was a kid in a New I Jersey. Shrapnel. Yeah, and he was just a a dopey New Jersey kid who. He played mm-hmm. endless shows with the Ramones back, back then. Yeah. And Johnny gave yeah. him advice one time. He said, kid, this is how you tour. He said, you get yourself a briefcase and it's empty and you put the money in the briefcase and you don't leave the road until the briefcase is full. Oh, wow. <laughs> He said That's some pretty good advice. Yeah. And he said when the briefcase is might, but but if but if you're getting fifty dollars a night, yeah. that's gonna take a while. Or you get a very small briefcase. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. It turned uh, into a fanny pack. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, maybe a little more of a fanny pack <laughs> than a briefcase, but still, you know, six of one. Yes. But he um yes. and he said when the briefcase is full, then you go home. So mm. um well, there you go. So, for to there, this might sound like a strange question or a weirdly uh, bizarre question. What it, what does it feel like? The because each band has a different identity, a different power, a different a different everything. Mm-hmm. They're very they're wildly different bands. Even though there is there's a common thread through them, they're still wildly different bands. Mm-hmm. Gun Club cramps and then bad seats like what did it mm-hmm. feel like to be in the cramps to be on a stage actually because you know what it felt like to receive the music of the cramps as a fan because you were a fan first yeah what was it like to be the one making that music like what what was that what did that power feel like terrifying uh, it, you know it was it was a uh, scary because I had only been playing guitar for a year. So I felt like I didn't know how to play guitar, mm-hmm. uh, but, but really they, they believed in me. So that was, that was enough. And, and as it turned out, I did know how to play, but um, you know, there, there were, uh, it was a magical weird. It was a, a weird power and it was really something like, you know, separate from the rest of reality. You know, mm-hmm. and, and you can say this about bands, but the cramps had a really special thing. You know, Lux Interior was like a magician, really, and or a guru or something. You know, and he would do things that were incredible. Like I couldn't, I couldn't believe sometimes what was going on. You know, I mean, I, I don't know if I wrote this in the book or not, but one time I was. Uh, you know, playing and I looked over and there was a, you know, new wave girl on stage with a, you know, Catholic school girl shirt and, and leotard on and she was dancing and jumped on stage to dance. And I really looked down t- to my neck to see if I was hitting the next right chord mm-hmm. and, and looked up again. And suddenly Lux was wearing the skirt Dance, shimming like her and she was there in her leotard uh-huh. <laughs> and I was like how does that happen in one second you know <laughs> you know uh, also you know he was he was a daredevil and he was just a, a, a great magical person you know with mm-hmm. such power and such a, yeah otherworldly uh, uh, charms and, and charisma and uh, yeah it was hard to explain you know, and, and I was, that was my first foray into actually, you know, playing in front of more than 10 people, you know, yeah. and, 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 and recording for the first time, even that was a ritualistic, uh, uh, thing to do, you know, and, uh, and, and there were, uh, many, many amazing things going, going on with them. There was a lot of magic. Yeah. Sure. And, and magic is a recurring theme through the book and it's a recurring a theme in terms of your own self identity, I guess you could say, because for a mm. long time, you, it seemed like you, you didn't have the highest uh, self esteem or regard for what you brought yeah. to the table necessarily. But yes, Go ahead. and I just feel like, but what you were bringing to the, like, 
and this this might sound strange. You're one of the people when you play. There's the one of the highest percentages of you coming out through your instrument. It's so distinct, and it's so it's just like it's it's only only you could do what you do when you play, and it's clearly you, and it's like a one to one. What's in your head comes out through the amp. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, first of all, thank you for saying such a nice thing. And, um, you know, the, I set out to, um, I guess I reached my goal if you're saying that, but <laughs> I set out to, uh, be, you know, I thought I want to be an expressionist kind of guitar player. Mm -hmm. You know, I it wasn't, I wasn't really wanting to be, uh, Steve Howe and yes, or, or anything like that. Or, sure. You know, I didn't want to go <laughs> all over the place. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was really a fan. I mean, this is, I was a fan of the Ramones, you know, very basic slabs of sound. Um, and you know, and that definitely ex expressed a complete attitude and world, uh, you know, and, and the cramps, you know, Ryan Gregory's playing was, uh, completely, uh, uh, like you know a jackson pollock <laughs> you know mm -hmm. type, type of playing you know i loved pat place and the contortions and james chance and the contortions mm -hmm. she was just playing slide guitar in this completely expressionistic way and and it was the same thing and so those are my kind of idols and um and 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 i just set out to say like okay well that that's a way to play and uh and that's what i want to do and uh and I, um, I guess I achieved it and, and went, uh, and, uh, and I, I don't see any reason not to, uh, you know, to, to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. No, I, actually, I don't know. I don't know what happens when I put a guitar in my hand. That That's actually the truth. But that, that's kind of instinctual. But that's the magic to me is that you're yeah. not, you're not you're not taking the watch apart necessarily to figure out yeah. what's going on here. You're, you, you are, you are it. No, so. I suppose so. <laughs> yeah. No, it's really, you know, um, but, uh, but I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm really happy. You know, there, there have been times that I, in my, in my playing guitar, of, you know, 40 years of playing guitar, you know, um, there has been, times where I thought like, oh, I really should learn how to play in standard tuning and learn all of this, you know, you know, or maybe I'll never get a job again. You know? <laughs> but then I was like, then I'm like, no, no, no. Those are, those are momentary like ideas, but they're not, they're not really, they wouldn't serve me very well, you know, mm -hmm. to, to do that. So, you know, so off we go. Yeah. Open the tuned guitar. Yeah. Look, when you do it that way, you have the seek. Nobody can figure out what you're doing. They can't. They can't take it from yeah. you because you can't explain it. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um, well, they can. Ha I would hope more people would learn this language. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, it, it's it's really okay. amazing. Your your playing has always served the larger purpose to me. If that makes sense, you're not. Mm. It's not about watch me do my thing. It's about here's what we are doing and you. Yeah. Um, there's a sentence and, and musicians. So. Yeah. In your book, you talk about when you went to go get married in Las Vegas and yeah, maybe the, this might be one of the best single sentences in any book ever. Uh, now for people who don't know, circus circus is a casino in Las Vegas. That's kind of, so it's seen better days and it's, it's kind of where I think Hunter Thompson, uh, fear and loathing. A lot of it took place at circus circus for, to give you context. Oh, wait, well, I'm, I'm going to interject one thing mm -hmm. that I was actually just staying across the street from circus circus okay. days ago. Really? I looked at it. Yeah. It was a little worse for wear. I will say. Yeah. <laughs> I know Vince Neal from Molly crew has a restaurant there and one of the things on the on their menu, they have a forty ounce drink that they serve in a plastic toilet that 
Okay. <laughs> you can get, they'll fill the toilet up with booze, but they, I, they're always out of the toilet. Anytime I've gone there, they're like, yeah, we're out of the toilets. So oh, it's in high demand. It might be high it's demand. It's in high demand or, or, or it doesn't really exist. Yeah. Or incredibly low demand and they just never ordered more. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yes, but, more. <laughs> but here, here's this sentence. You said, we figured we'd get married by a clown at Circus Circus. That proved not to be possible. Now, here's the best sentence I've ever read in my life. The clowns at Circus Circus, we discovered, did not double as ordained ministers. <laughs> Which... It's, it, was, it, was a, it was a reality check. <laughs> it... Of a grand fantasy we had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The the book, you, you talk so much about Los Angeles and just being, being a fan in Los Angeles as, as a kid and going from that to becoming in one of the bands. Did you think you had it in you to take that leap because it, it seemed like you could have been comfortable being a fan writing about music mm -hmm. like that definitely could have been the road you went down. Yes, it could have been, but, uh, Jeffrey Lee Pierce, who I was a weird kid. I met, uh, just flat out said, Oh, we're going to have a band and you're going to be in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was so taken aback that I said yes, uh, but also that he um, he believed I could do it. So I thought, mm -hmm. if he believes it, then maybe I should try to believe it, you know, and, and try it at least. And uh, and, and um, immediately we were. I think we it was a little diabolical at first, but uh, we quickly you know, made something, you know, Jeffrey was great. He, you know, he had songs already and, um, and, uh, and he was also patient, you know, he knew mm -hmm. what to do with me, you know, and he knew I couldn't play and that I was going to stronk along until something happened, you mm -hmm. know, and he just, and he knew, you know, he knew that, you know, he, the first record he gave me, he said like, okay, first thing you do with the guitar is tune it to open E because blues players play slide like that. Mm -hmm. And then you can just then listen to Bo Diddley's a gunslinger. Uh, it's one chord and it's the most amazing song. Mm -hmm. And that, that became my, my template. So, you know, for everything. And then I, I learned how to play a Bo Diddley beat and, um, a little backwards, but I learned how to play it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and that was it. I was like, I'm hooked. Mm -hmm. When when did you realize the 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 breadth of Jeffrey Lee Pierce's talent and vision? Because you were just two you were two goofy kids uh, at that. But starting off, you're just two music fans. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, pretty much like when I heard his songs, I was like, wait a minute, you know, this guy knows what he's doing, and also. Um, I actually had seen um, his previous band, which was called The Red Lights, and um, check it out. There's a there's a record of their demos out on in the red, and um, and those were you know kind of a power pop sort of band, mm -hmm. and really advanced, and you can really hear the the style of Jeffrey Lee Pierce in those songs. So um, you know he was he wanted to be you know. Instead of a power pop band, he wanted a more kind of post punk uh, experimental kind of band. You know mm -hmm. that was the thing, and we really wanted to like you know mix up genres in the way we saw like the Cramps do with the rockabilly and psychedelic music, or or, the, or James Chance and the Contortions with like James Brown and Albert Eiler. Yeah. you know it was uh, you know done in punk style. You know, so it was all. Um, yeah, the mashup and the alchemy was 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 where we were at. And we, you know, Jeffrey was a, a reggae writer for Slash Magazine, reviewed all the reggae records, and you know, we were into dub, and we were into many things, you know, other than punk. punk. Mm -hmm. We actually met at a Para Ubu concert. If that will tell you anything, you yeah. Know? And uh, 
and 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 uh, you know we were into the more experimental. You know, we wanted to hear something different. We wanted to be something different than just a just a, a, a regular rock band. You know, yeah. But you know, we took we took we took the the regular rock template of, of blues and and and, uh, and rock and roll and you know and made made try to disjoint it a bit. <laughs> stretch it out yeah yeah you because know, nostalgia was definitely not on the cards you mm-hmm. know that, no. and we would have just been a bar band or something well that and and that's one yeah, of the yeah. things that that is a, a common thread through your career also is there's an a knowledge of what the what has happened and what is, what is in the past mm-hmm. but it's never been yeah. It's never been a revival nostalgia thing. There's always one foot is put is taking a huge step forward to see what's next while mm-hmm. still having a foot in, in the best of what has been established. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a way to keep things exciting mm-hmm. and interesting for you and for people who listen to music, you know, yeah. like people want to hear something they haven't heard before. You know, and then if you don't spread your wings, you're grounded, baby. Yeah. You know, you're not going to go anywhere, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so that, you know, it's, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a gamble each time you do that, mm-hmm. you know, like when the last Pink Monkey Birds record, you know, he did a 14 minute, you know, you know, jazzy, you know, uh, Chicano rock groove song, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, we were like, oh, no one's going to listen to a 14 minute long song. You know, <laughs> what are we now? We've done it. You know? <laughs> but of course, it got, a, it got a great reception. We mean, we loved it. We knew it was good. Yeah. You, you, know, you know what you're but doing. But still, you know, but, but we were breaking type mm-hmm. you know, by doing that. Yeah. And it was met with a great, great response. And, yeah. I, I love the Pink Monkey Birds records. Is there, is, what's, what's, uh, what's coming up for the band? Do you have plans? Uh, well, we have to. We're going to record a new a new uh, album sometime, sometime, okay. hopefully sooner than later. But right now, I mean, just this last week, I had uh, two albums come out that weren't the Big Monkey Birds. One is uh, with a project I'm doing called the Wolf Manhattan Project. Mm-hmm. And that's with um, uh, Mick Collins, who's in the Gories and the Dirt Bombs, mm-hmm. and uh, and Bob Burt, who is in Pussy Galore, Sonic yes. Youth. He's playing with John Spencer right now. Yeah, and uh, and so we have a, a super group. We've been together ten years. This is our second album, and I think we've played about five times. Okay, <laughs> yeah, no. So it's, 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 it's a very specialized. But I'm hoping we play out because this album is great. So we have a, a rec- an album out. It's only out digitally right now. It'll be coming out in in the in the in the real form of vinyl uh, next year. Okay. When, when vinyl, when the vinyl supply catches up. And, yeah. uh, and, uh, then, and then I have uh, also last week is a, another album that I did um, right before the pandemic, a live album in uh, Australia. And that was with a band called uh, Harry Howard and the near death experience. And Harry Howard is the, is the brother of Roland S. Howard, who wow. was in the okay. birthday party and uh, these immortal souls, crime mm-hmm. and sea solution, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and Harry has played with Roland in all of these incarnations. And he has his own band that is amazing with a few, few great out, al- really a great albums uh, worth checking out. And, uh, and I saw them play in Australia. We played together and, uh, and so I was going, I got asked to go to Australia to play for Kim Salmon of The Scientist, a very mm-hmm. nice, dear friend of mine. And he was having a book coming out and he was having a book launch party concert. And he said, oh, would you come and do, and do it? And I said, of course. And he said, I can't afford to bring out the whole band. And I said, that, uh, well, let's use Howie, uh, Harry's band. Mm-hmm. And as it so happened, they had a recording uh, mobile recording thing going on, so we recorded it, and it's really uh, 
great the command performance for the king mm-hmm. Kim mm-hmm. Salmon mm-hmm. I mean, of well, the scientists. <laughs> yeah, look, you're not gonna uh, sci- scientists are as that's ta- that's that's like Mount Rushmore level uh, great. Um, yeah, well, I will I will tell you that I I met Kim Salmon because. Uh, they had moved to London and they heard we were going on tour. The gun club were going on tour. This is a 84 probably. And uh, Kim wrote me a letter saying, uh, this is my band and uh, we're going on tour with you. And he sent me a cassette of mm-hmm. the Blood Red River record. And I was like, of course you're going on tour with yeah. us. I don't know who you are. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah. And, and he was like, he's like, we're going on tour with you. And, uh, save some of the booze for us. Don't let that blonde guy drink all the booze because we're going to need it too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that was his letter to me. <laughs> so uh-huh. It was so ballsy and amazing. Uh, what could I do but say, so, I'm on tour. Yeah, you have no the choice. Is history. The decision yeah. gets made. But they You're... were great and we friends forever. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. And then and it's funny for them to be on the other side of the globe, but to be kind of this like, you're spiritually connected from the other side of the planet. In terms oh, 100%. Of, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel super close to the scientists and their music. And, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, we come from the same thing. And that's the thing. Harry Howard and his band, which also includes uh, Dave Graney and Claire Moore, who were in a band called The Moodist. I don't know if you know them. Absolutely, them. yes. An Australian band that lived in London for a long time. Mm-hmm. But we all lived at the same time in London and we were all dead broke and had weird jobs. And uh, so we we, we, uh, bond over our uh, shared uh, poverty wars of of musicians in London, expats in London, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, at that time. Now, just as a thing, a couple more questions and I'll let you get on with your night. And Mm -hmm. you've seen so many shows. So many legendary things. What is one that you wish you could just show everybody that you saw with your eyes? It's in your brain. You wish you could project it on a screen for everybody to see. Oh, God. I think that Paraubu show that I saw with, uh, that I saw with Jeffrey Lee Pierce that first time, because not only had I met him, but that they were, um, so amazing they're still amazing mm-hmm. but you know but that was when the mo- the modern dancer first album had wow, just okay. come out and they were they were firing on all uh, all levels and it was a very metaphysical uh, experience and david thomas wow you know wow you know uh what what a, what a good performer and what an odd character but but what a charismatic mm-hmm. person and what an original original uh, poet and performer and like and uh and and just the musicians everything everything tony mamoni oh my god bass playing mm-hmm. from heaven mm-hmm. you know it's amazing amazing and, yeah and yeah so i i think uh an early pair of ubu comps okay that one was mind-blowing and you you uh patty smith at the rock patty smith at the roxy oh my god see now here they come now okay. they're going to start coming out of the 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 spigot has been turned. Oh, yeah, the Ramones. The Ramones. <laughs> See, the here Ramones it goes. This is when you're going to make everybody jealous <laughs> oh. of what you saw. Yeah, these are these are life, life these are life changing experiences, mm-hmm. and also every one of those experiences created a community of friends who are those who are still here are still my friends. Yeah, you know that create you know the same people, the like minded people who are. Still like-minded today, luckily, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, are st- are still my friends, you know. Now, f- so fun- that that is another plus of all that. Absolutely. Well, that's a plus when when people like you and they stay friends with you. That's, uh, that's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you also have to be a good guy. Kind of helps helps that whole friend thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> the fi- final thing. My friend Jeff Fierzig is currently making a, a a movie about the legendary Stardust Cowboy, and uh, I've seen oh, stuff I from. I've talked. I saw Jeff the other night. The yeah. movies, the stuff I've seen is mind blowing. It's gonna he's gonna rock everybody's world once again with one of his his movies. 
but you played with the legendary Stardust Cowboy. Yes, he said he has great footage of me. Um, but the uh, yeah, that was uh, an experience. I, I write about it in the book. But wow, that was something I was not ready for. You know, mm-hmm. as I say at the beginning of the chapter, Jeffrey Lee Pierce, Lux and Jerry, and Nick Cave could have never prepared me for <laughs> playing with with the ledge. You know, legendary Stardust Cowboy. Because he was just like, it was like chasing a feral cat, you know, uh, <laughs> playing with him. You know, uh-huh. he was just so great and so sincere and so, uh, yeah, talk about a visionary. Absolutely. He had his own vision, but it was, but it was hard, it was hard to keep up with it. <laughs> yeah. You know, to play. I mean, I mean, we figured we, we, we worked it out. But, uh, but he was, it was like, wow, this guy is a real, you know, a real, a real outer space man, you know? Sure. Yeah. He's, no, uh, that... you know, Ziggy Stardust got his name from the, you know, David Bowie got Ziggy Stardust as, as part from the legendary Stardust Cowboy. And, mm-hmm. and yeah, you know, ground control to Major Tom, you know, it was, uh, it was, uh, it, uh Norm Ledge is, it was, just an original it's hard to explain him yeah i think the movie is going to help people you know, understand him exactly understand i mean you know uh, you know there's paralyzed his, his hit of you know named the sure. worst record ever made you mm-hmm. know and uh but the most beautiful record ever made. it's one of the greatest you know, records and, ever made it, one of the greatest yeah of all times and uh and um, yeah, he was great. And what a sensation he caused in, in Europe, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and everywhere. But but well, on the tour I went on, it was in Europe, and uh, and people went crazy for him. A real showman, you know, mm-hmm. a real uh, savant, you know. Yeah. And um, and uh, it was a, what a what a great pleasure it was. So chaotic. But so fun, you know. Yeah. So, so wild. And, well, yeah. I mean, it was a different wild than the other wild. Yeah. It was wild. It wasn't a danger wild. Mm-hmm. It was a wild wild. Uh-huh. <laughs> you. That's what I was saying. Your book. Go ahead. I just want to say. The again, the book is it's truly thrilling and amazing, and there's so much you can people can take away from this book, whether it's about recovery, talking about addiction, talking about being an artist, talking about fitting in Mm -hmm. all of it. You, you run this book runs the gamut sexuality. You, you have had some kind of life, my friend, and you captured it all in this book. I can't recommend it uh, more highly. And it's called some new kind of kick and people should check it out. And, I appreciate you coming on the show to talk to uh, talk with us for a little bit. So uh, I'm glad you had me on. Oh, great to talk to you. Well, thank you so much. And I hope everyone. I hope to see you soon. And here's the book. I'm putting right, it up on thanks. the screen. Thanks. So we will. Uh, and and you have a great night. Yeah. You too. Okay. See you later. All right. Bye. How about that? A legend. We had a legend. A legend. <laughs>